Well, uh, good afternoon. I'm not sure how challenging uh, these Beatitudes are to you, but uh, certainly got me thinking more deeply about what God calls all of us to as believers in terms of Jesus just laying out the attitudes that would be primary in his kingdom and what he would empower and encourage us to live by, uh, both in terms of the attitudes that would be inside us as well as then the reflective behavior um, that would, would result from that. Um, I think the challenge in us uh, taking these things on and doing them is recognizing the world is so contrary to them. And, you know, when you choose to be poor in spirit, you choose to be a mourner, you reflect on yourself in humble ways <laughs> instead of proud, proud ways, or you choose to be meek, uh, we can start feeling like we're going to, that we're losing in the world, that, that maybe people will get things over on us or, you know, people are taking our shirt, you know, if people ask for our shirt, we give her our cloak, you know, all those things that Jesus encourages us to do. We just have to realize that when we orient ourselves to the kingdom of God, we are orienting ourselves to the greatest and most powerful aspect of reality, of creation. Um, and, and so therefore we never lose when we love our enemies, when we do, when we make ourselves low, when God calls us to be low. Because as, as I continue to say, God does promise as we humble ourselves before him, he lifts us up, not, not to a place of self-pride or we're better than other people, uh, but a place of stability, a place of peace, a place of joy, a place of contentment that God allows even in the presence of the evil of the world. Uh, but as I have kind of suggested certain a blessed certain beatitudes that the world would have as we think about the things that they prioritize you know re relevant to you know what Jesus prioritizes here one thing i have here is a blessed are those who eat whole grains for your digestion will be good and your going very regular um and so in terms of just what the um what the world would encourage in light of you know what they would orient their lives to uh, the physical self, the, the the benefits that come from from gratification, you know, stimulation in in terms of the flesh, where Jesus is certainly calling us to something uh, much much deeper, um, and much more God oriented. Uh, so as we engage with this whole principle of meekness, again, reading just the first few of these beatitudes, uh, what we've been through and where we are today, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed for, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. And uh, one thing I didn't say about this meekness and the reason why I suggested those three ways the Greeks engaged with this word um, was there's really no fitting English word to translate the Greek word that is here, that is translated meekness. Um, if we were to you know, try and find a, a, a single English word that did that, it probably would be gentleness. Uh, but this whole idea of power un, under control, uh, a strength that that is moderated, uh, that that is under God's control and, and doesn't press its rights, but is willing to uh, be, be gentle in, in, in the presence of people. And, you know, a very compelling thing um, to think of, than the meek inheriting the earth. Uh, you know, when you think about what the world would say about those who inherit the earth, it's, it's the intelligent, it's the powerful, it's the successful, it's the, you know, the ones who have a great inheritance. It's it's the people that have connected families. You know, you, 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 you've got the guns, you've got the ammunition, you're the one that's going to inherit the earth. And, and yet in Jesus' kingdom and what he's establishing here, no, it's the meek that are going to inherit the earth. And, and certainly, you know, with, with all of these beatitudes, there is a now and a not yet aspect. Uh, you, there, there, there's oftentimes in Scripture this now and this not yet aspect. The not yet aspect in terms of just what will happen in eternity, what will happen in Christ's kingdom. You know, I, I do believe that Jesus will have a physical kingdom on this earth. I, I know there is good company that doesn't ag agree with that. Uh, they see that the next thing that we're waiting for is Jesus establishing his heavenly kingdom. Uh, but I, I, I tend to th see things in a different, in a way that would be more dispensational in nature, um, where Jesus would have a thousand years of reigning on the earth. And I think there are things, but we won't go into why, why I think that is. Let, let me not go there. But, but if that is the case, 
Um, again, in terms of the not yet aspect of that, certainly the, the meek inheriting the earth would be the meek having this role in the kingdom of, of Christ here on earth. And then even for those that don't believe in the millennial reign, the not yet aspect is the fact that God will eventually re renew the earth, will make a new earth. And in, in that sense, the meek will inherit the earth in a not yet kind of way. Uh, but... We also uh, recognize that um, that that there is a there is a now part of that too. That basically what meekness will show us is the fact that um, there are certain things in life that aren't about power. There are certain things that that that, are, that aren't about money and influence. And so, therefore, some things that I have here is that that money can buy a bed, but it can't buy sleep. Money can buy books, but it can't buy brains. Money can buy food, but not an appetite. It can buy finery, but not beauty. A house, but not a home. Medicine, but not health. Pleasure, but not peace. Luxuries, but not culture. Amusements, but not joy. A crucifix, but not a savior. And so we think about, you know, just what meekness orients us to and, and how there are aspects of the earth that they will enjoy that the powerful and those oriented to the flesh won't enjoy. You know, once you're oriented to the things of the flesh, once you're pursuing power, once your, uh, your inner, inner uh, temperature, your uh, orientation to yourself is, is, is based on, you know, what do people think of me? What, how successful am I? You know, what, how many material things that I have, you know, what, what you recognize is you become enslaved to those things. Um, you know, BJ Thomas, the, the old song, uh, using things and loving people rather than loving things and using people. Uh, cause oftentimes when we do love things, you know, we, we tend to use people and that leads to misery, as the song says. So, so, so therefore, you know, even as you recognize, you know, the American dream, all the things that would be part of the American dream, you know, you're, you're an actor, you're a musician, you're a politician, you're a businessman, and yet what dysfunction lies in the wake of those people? You know, you find people that are at the pinnacle of success, but they die of a drug overdose, dose, or they're alcoholics, or, you know, they're, they're abusing people, or, you know, diff different things that, you know, and, and again, maybe not across the board, not 100%. It's not like there aren't people of the flesh and kind of figure it out. But, you know, when you think about the inner peace, when you think about the joy, when you're with the settledness of knowing a sovereign God, the settledness of having yourself oriented to him, you know, uh, I think for many of us, the question is, you know, where does the buck stop? And, and once the buck stops with you, like, like, like you're the one orchestrating everything, like, like there's no, there's no backdrop that there's, there's no default. There's no, there's no place to go to that. Okay. If I mess it up, if I don't, if it, you know, I'm in an accident, I lose the job, I lose the relationship, I lose the thing. If it's all dependent on me, uh, how can you ever have peace in that situation? You know, life being so finite, how quickly things can change in a dime where you, you have your health, you have your job, you have the economy, you have the 401k, you've got the retirement, and boom, something happens and it's gone. And and again, when you're the be-all and end-all, you know, the, the opposite of this meekness, because this meekness would be, you know, strength and the control because we're oriented to God and, and the power he provides for us and the strength he provides for us. Um, you know, that, that's a tough place to be. And so that's where you, you almost become, in, in that state, you become consumed by the things you're pursuing, consumed by the things you need because all those things need to prop you up. See, but when you're meek, when you're poor in spirit, when you mourn over yourself, when you're oriented to God where he becomes a default, he becomes the, 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 the savior. He becomes the one that rescues, that, that when, when, when you're doing what you can, 
under his authority and under his guidance, and then all of a sudden there's a failure. There's sin even. There, there's a problem. There's a loss of the health or whatever. There's always a place to ret- retreat to. There's always a refuge. You know, that's why I love when God talks about being a refuge because he's saying, I can be the one. Now, now, he's naturally, he desires and we should be living with him all the time. Uh, but it's in the context of failure or, or disruption in his plan where we recognize there's always a place for me to go to. And see, it's the meek that recognize that. It, it's the meek that think less of themselves and more of God and more of his kingdom and more of people too. Because that's, that's certainly what, what, what God's attitude, what God's mindset, what the kingdom of heaven on earth means is that we care for people. That, that the think of ourselves less means again thinking more of God and thinking more of others. You know, be, being just, being kind, being merciful, being gentle with, with, with people. You know, this is all about what we have in the kingdom of God and then what we... But again, you inherit the earth. See, see, now you're able to be balanced in terms of what you understand things are there for. It's, it's not to make you significant. It's not to bring you satisfaction. It's not, it's just a, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's providing for my needs. It's keeping me safe. It's keeping me warm. You know, maybe there's some pleasure. You know, we certainly have far more than we would ever need in this country. You know, it's hard for us in, in America to even discern the difference between needs and wants. You know, in the minute, well, I need a home, I need the this, I need the that. Well, you know, why is that? Like, like, there's a basic need you have, or is it uh, someone else has it that that you know they have a TV, they have a big TV, so I have a big TV, and you know, so it's crazy as you go in to buy a TV, and the big TVs are just as uh, you know cheap as the small TVs. But anyways, <laughs> that's how I justify having a big TV. But n- n- not about me. But anyway, so. All I'm saying, though, is, you know, we, 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 all, we are not tied to things. We're not tied to circumstance. We're not tied to events. We're, we're tied to God. And, that, and that's that, gen, that, that meekness that comes. Again, that, that's why, again, all in the, this is all in the context of the meek will inherit the earth. Why? Because, again, they will see what the earth is there for. And 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 the pride will the prideful will misunderstand those not oriented to God, who have to make it all themselves and 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 ultimately have a warped relationship with the things of of this earth, the relationships they have, the families they have. There's there's just a warped dependence, you know. Where all of a sudden, you know, I I can make my life about other people, but if I'm dependent on those people now to be a certain way or treat me a certain way. Well, then now I'm being a little selfish in my making my life about other people. And that's kind of an example of kind of that warped way of how someone who is not oriented to God, again, who doesn't have that backdrop, that doesn't have that refuge, that doesn't have that purse, that place to go to when what you have isn't enough. And then that's what God offers. And that's what the meek understand. And that is why they will inherit the earth. Well, it's kind of fitting maybe that uh, we didn't get into the next one uh, because, boy, well, I should say it, you know, just because it's so, you know, when you think about these attitudes that are here, you know, poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek. You know, the, the, the next beatitude is really like not, now what is, the, what is the outpouring of that? What's the implication of that? And that is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I mean, maybe, maybe maybe chew on that for a few days, in terms of just how much are you, how much am I hungering and thirsting for righteousness? Yeah. Well, it is a communion Sunday this Sunday. Uh, we will be celebrating it here in, in safe ways. We'll do very much the same of what we did last time in terms of just having different stations where people with clean hands, you know, going back to what was that, Psalm 24, right? Uh, um, until there's a clean hands, we'll be uh, preparing the communion. Well, we'll be preparing the communion and then handing out communion um, and, and, and just... Uh, we're working through that. But certainly if you're home, 
um, assemble those elements yourself, join us, you re recognize the fellowship we have with each other, um, even when we're apart. You know, as we had Bible study last night, and we're taking time to pray, um, you know, someone mentioned, you know, just a, that, that passage, you know, way in the beginning, where where God says to Adam, or about Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. And, and, and you know, this coronavirus, this social distancing, you know, ha has a lot of people scurrying in terms of feeling alone. And, and, and we got to find ways to connect. And, you know, being, being with us as a community on Facebook, uh, to, watching the live service, and then just reinforcing that connectedness we have through Christ as we celebrate communion is at least what we can do. Again, if there's anything else we can do, I can do personally uh, for you. Uh, just don't hesitate. Um, but, but you know, certainly God bless you in your day-to-day -day and in all that you're internalizing uh, of what Jesus is saying about the kind of people we should be in these Beatitudes. God bless you.